Hey everybody, this is Buddy. Well, I wanted to show you uh, the view from the road, so in case you're one of the guests that come here, you will see how to get here. When you see this big, I guess that's kind of like a, a gold looking color, and you can start looking for this house. This is the blue house, and this is the cargo shipping container that's in front of it and you'll be where you're supposed to be always you'll see a, uh, that board there until I think it's for sale but you'll also see this yellow house we're one house uh, to the north and right across the street from that house and this is what I'm doing today on a day there's no wind <laughs> I'm chilling. I want to show you this tree real quick. You see these red things? They call it Aki. And this tree is prolific. Every year it produces a ton of Aki. And they make it uh, almost like scrambled eggs when you eat it. Almost like eating eggs. It's a very interesting plant. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm losing weight. I don't know if you can hear me, but I said I'm losing weight. Getting some sun and losing weight. Good old ice in a bottle. <laughs> ice water. Drinking a lot of this. Mm. Oh, you gotta love it. Well, that was about all I wanted to show you. Uh, yes, I am getting in shape. Yes, I am losing weight. <laughs> the wind is not blowing, and that's all right. It bees that way sometimes. Let me put the water bottle back down underneath there. It, it bees that way sometimes. Let me see if I have that zoom right. No, don't zoom in. <laughs> all right. Well, uh... Let me see if I got anything to say. Well, some people wonder, might as well get relaxed if I'm gonna do this. Because I've been getting this question a lot on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Seems like a lot of people want to know uh, how to maintain and keep a type of peace once you start awakening to the illusion of this world and you realize that everything that we thought we were told to be true is not necessarily the truth. So it is part of the recognition of self-realization to come into the awareness that yeah sure everything's a lie everything's always been a lie 
there's let's see if I can do this like this that ain't gonna work I don't think y'all bear with me I'm gonna find the an angle here pretty soon see I got this blocking the Sun it's it's technically that's the way you lay out you, <laughs> you design your layout position where the Sun ain't dead in your face and then if you got these you put these on let me show you what they look like I look like a monster now don't I ah. <laughs> This, uh, this saves your eyes, I'm telling you. This is what they give people when they're laying out in a, in a what do you call it, thing? <laughs> you know what I mean, a suntan bed. And I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I did it there for a while, but um, now um, I've, I've avoided it for quite a while. I lost track of what I was going to say. How do you maintain peace once you realize most everything you've ever been told is a lie well there's really no short answer to that it's it's not it's not easy to explain but one of the first realizations of awakening and then through self-realization you realize that it was only your thoughts that ever projected you to be a victim from anyone or anything vengeance or dislove or dislike of you it doesn't even matter what other people say do or think about anything much less what they think about you it's actually none of your business what people think about you and the quicker that you can see that that doesn't matter that physically it doesn't have no life unless you give it life through your thoughts so the quicker that you can come to the conclusion that it's not to your benefit to have these negative thoughts given to you by other people and by their opinion of you. So I can't find I can't find a way to hold this camera and talk at the same time. It's it's like going crooked this way, that way. And if I try to set it down somewhere, it ain't right. It's I can't. I can't. There's supposed to be a uh, tripod around here somewhere. I'm gonna hopefully I find it. <laughs> but um, I had this saying one time. If you let things matter so much, like you got to be involved in what that other person's life is or doing, it matters. It just matters so much. Well, when something breaks with that relationship or that situation you can't fix it you let it matter too much and it's a it's a law in the universe but if you love it you realize what it is and you realize who you are through self-realization of the I am Christ-minded consciousness then you can come to the conclusion that it doesn't matter because the oneness that is what we are is in them and through them and whatever they got to play out in the game of life, they're going to do whatever they got to do. And it doesn't matter. And if you let it not matter, then if it breaks, you can fix it. It can actually be worked out to the benefit of the higher self with the higher purpose. Everything's for the higher purpose. We might not think it is, but you better believe it is. Now on that level, when you let something matter so much, whether it's a loved one or a child or a grandmother or aunt or uncle, their drama and their situations that are happening to them shouldn't really matter. But everybody thinks it's a Christian way of being to have a type of empathy where it sucks your freedom and your ability to have peace in your life. That's the way the world's set up is an illusion that it matters. And everybody else, if they see you not letting it matter, then they start pointing a finger at you. Well, that's what the, that's what the, ah, that's what the, the grid is. That's what the matrix is. 
that sees full of these agents out there that are going to quickly tell you that uh, you got to make it matter. You can't be neutral and cut people off. You can't you can't um, not get in their drama. Well, I'm telling you, if you get in their drama, you're losing your peace right away. So I'm going to just say it. I've got children. I've got grandchildren. I've got people in my life I love, but I don't let them matter to me. I can't get into their drama. I can't get into their situations. It's, it's not important for me to... You now, misery loves company. And most of the people that really can bring you down are the people that don't get the fact that <laughs> you ain't gonna let it matter unless you tell them like I'm telling you. So for all my loved ones listening, it don't mean I don't love you. It just means I know who you really are. And I know how short this life is and I know that uh, you're not who you think you are. And I'm not who I think I am. And this world is not what we think it is. So to answer the questions that people ask me about how do I maintain my peace and live uh, a life that's kind of different than most people do. And it's because I woke up and I know I'm not a victim. So I don't let nobody else buy space in my head. I don't let nobody thinking about what they think about me matter. Some people think I can't make videos good. <laughs> Guess what? You're right. I ain't even trying. I, ain't, I used to video edit, make it look so perfect and so professional. And you just go look at some of my earlier work. Well, I got demonetized and I got to looking at this thing a whole lot different. It's not important. It's important to keep your face in the frame. I mean, I'm trying to do that a little bit. But what's not important is to spend eight hours at a computer trying to make a video perfect. That's like trying to make your life perfect. It ain't going to happen. You can do it for a little while, and then somebody's going to snatch the rug out from under it, and it's just going to fall to pieces, and you can't fix it because you made it matter too much. You can make making videos matter. And I think that's why Casey Nastad got burned out. He was making videos and, and just going at a pace that was just un, unrealistic. And he was a perfectionist. If the people that I teach, and I do, I have a lot of people that are uh, friends of mine that I've e explained and showed tips and tricks about how to be successful on YouTube. And I see them make some of the same mistakes as, you know, perfectionists. When you're starting off, you got to have 20 videos up last week. You're 20 videos behind. Now, how are you going to try to do two a week, three a week, one a day? If you're letting the perfection of it stop you. That's what happens. They end up making, well, I'll just make one a week. Well, I'll just make one every two weeks. Well, they're going to be such good high dollar productions and look really good. I'm going to make them every month. People will love it. No, you're not going to, you're not going to grow your channel if you, if you don't get into not worrying about perfection. If you just get into the camera and I'm not even looking at the camera I'm looking way over I'm looking way over. see you know it's and I don't have sunglasses on so I can't really you know I'm moving my face around and that bothers people but if you're a true fan of this channel like and subscribe like and subscribe share pass this around share and comment and pass it around and um, yeah life is life is not about being a perfectionist there are things that have to be perfect, but there are some things that I've done changed in my life, and, and I don't want to get editing a lot of video and try to blend it all together and try to tell a story when, uh, hell, I can't even write a script. I can't even read my own writing after I write it. But you know, would you know what that feels like? If you're dyslexic, you would. I tell you, it irks me. To this day that uh, I, I can't write a script 
And so what I do is I, I just say, well, I want to speak from my heart. I want to tell you what I want to hear and what I know I, that has worked in my life that is truth and, and some, some kind of wisdom that has, has blessed me with the ability to sustain uh, peace. Now, the closest people in my life would be like Laura. And she'd say, he's full of shit. <laughs> he's so... He's so full of crap. Y'all need to not listen to him. But, you know, she sees, she sees me learning enlightenment. She sees me struggling with everyday life. We all do. But when we quit seeking such high levels of perfection, then we can actually start tuning things out that don't matter. It don't mean that you don't love them. It don't mean that you don't wish them well. It just means that you're not going to let it steal your peace. So I don't know who this is meant for, but if you're watching and you resonate with this and you see that you got too much drama in your life, you got to cut some things off. You got to you got to move on with your thinking. You can't let other people's thinking control how you act and react to religion, how you act and react to church, how you act and react to death, life, sickness, and disease. All these things are major. But when you get your body, your mind, and your consciousness right, mind, body, and spirit, they call it, and the three principles is thought, consciousness, and awareness. Very important very, to be aware of your thoughts. You, you can't be aware of your thoughts if you're unconsciously, subconsciously being led by false reality thinking. It doesn't do you or anyone else any good. You can't help nobody. If you're going to help somebody, you got to help yourself first. They say that on an airplane. If that mask falls down in the cabin in the airplane loses all oxygen, what good does it do you to try to help hook other people up with their oxygen? You got to hook yours on first, and then you might can help someone. So what that means is, in reality, your awareness of conscious reality is so important. It's like oxygen. Once you start striving to understand this, you stop striving in time. You let time collapse and you just be and you just have fun. Now, it ain't, fun comes with pain and misery too, but at the same time, we're all learning what is real. So, I'm going to cut it off there. I love you. And if you're family members and you're looking at this years and years from now, and you really want to know who you know your granddaddy was, your great granddaddy was. It's not this body, it's not this story named Buddy Huggins. It's nothing. But I love you, because I know who you are. <laughs> I can't explain why you're here and you're watching this 100 years from now or 50 years from now. But if YouTube don't crash and take it all down and I don't back it up, you ain't gonna see it anyway. <laughs> that's, that's what's important. <laughs> nothing is for real but what you are is eternal you're from God of God in God through God mother father God I call it and you've always been you always will be and that pisses a lot of church people off but that's okay because it's real and I do know that with all my being down to the very atoms of this false reality I know that I'm eternal at that level, and I'm you. And yes, we're stuck in time for right now, but I'm, I'm going to break my cycle, and I'm going to try to teach other people how to break theirs. Stop the endless entrapment of reincarnation into a body unless you desire to bring memory through death and you really, really want to do it, then you can do it and have fun too. Or you can just move on. So it's a deep story once you get once you get so far in it. But I gotta go. 
All right, let me see if I can do this. I always block my hand before I can do it because I'm actually cheating. I'm putting my little finger around there on this little stop button. All right, I'm fixing to go. I got to time this right again. <laughs> Y'all ready? Here it goes.